Welcome back, YouTube. Sensei Domino here. Welcome to the Spy and Ticks after party. Got quite a bit of stuff to share with you tonight. I had two TTM returns this week, both hockey. I'll be showing the 1934 Players Film Stars second series set. I have a 12 card Com C order, and I'll also be showing the last two uncut sheets that I purchased a couple weeks back of Japanese baseball players. So it should be a jam-packed video tonight. But let's go ahead and get started. I'll start with the TTMs. And this first one comes from West Palm Beach, Florida. Initials are BN. And unfortunately, they did not use the pouch. It's sort of been 50-50 so far. But I'd still rather have something in there to protect the cards than nothing. So whether they use it or not, I think it does help. And this is from... Mr. Islander, Bob Nystrom. And he signed all three of my cards. Signed it with his name and his number. And this is 74, 75 tops. Really nice card. And these all came back in fantastic shape. This is uh, 75, 76, I believe. Yeah, 75, 76, oh, peachy. We have the 7677 OPG. And this took probably seven weeks to come back. So relatively quick, I would I would say. So there we go. Very happy with this one. Thank you so much, Mr. Nystrom. Really appreciate it. Very happy to add those to my collection. All right, moving on to the next one. This is a Hockey Hall of Famer from Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. Initials are RL. And they also did not use my pouch, but that's okay. I think he signed two of three, and the one that actually suffered the most damage in the mail is the one that he did not sign. So I'm okay with that, but this is Rod Langway. This is the one he did not sign. And this corner got dinged pretty badly. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's it's smushed. And it was not like that when I sent it. So um, I don't know if this happened on the way there or on the way back, but I mean, I guess if a card's going to get damaged, at least uh, have it be the one that wasn't signed. So this is a 83-84. Oh, peachy. That he did not sign, but he did sign the other two. This is 82-83 Opeachy. Rod Langway. Really nice signature. That card looks fantastic. And he signed what is this? 84-85? Yeah. 84-85 tops. So very happy to get this return. I sent this the same day I sent the Nystrom, so they both took the same amount of time. Sent them out, same time, came back, same day. So um, about seven weeks. And very happy to get these and add them to my collection. All right. So next, I will be showing the complete set of 1934 Players Film Stars second series set. And this is the complete set. I've got them all sleeved up, ready to go. And this set um, doesn't have the same star power that some of the sets that I've shown have, but there were some key names in here that I really wanted to add to the collection. And so decided to pick it up. On top of that, one of the main draws for me picking up this set is the artwork is absolutely stunning on these cards. And so uh, just decided to pick it up. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy seeing this set as much as I'm enjoying showing it. So let's go ahead and get started. And I am not familiar with 
a lot of the cards and the, the uh, actors and actresses in this set, but maybe somebody that's watching uh, will and will appreciate these cards. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with Elizabeth Allen. Just look at the artwork. Absolutely stunning. And uh, I showed the uh, thir 1938 Players Film Stars third series set a couple weeks back. And this is the same way. This, it says on the top, I don't know if I can focus yet. This surface is adhesive. So this set also had sort of the adhesive back. So the fact that some of these cards, uh, you know, survived in the condition that they're in, over all this time with that sort of adhesive back is, is just absolutely amazing to me. But uh, If you look on the back, there's a little bit of uh, grime or something like that on the back of this card, but you'll see that quite a bit with uh, card number ones in various sets. But the front is absolutely amazing. Put that there. I guess I'll just stack them up right there. So next we have Heather Angel, a little off center, a little bit of a little grime on the right side, but uh, also these surfaces sort of have um, sort of a, a I don't know how you want to describe it, sort of a textured surface. So there's like little bumps and stuff like that around the card, and so that's sort of what's picking up these uh, little patches of dirt and whatnot. And if you saw this up close, you'd kind of know what I'm talking about. I probably did a bad, I, <laughs> a bad job of explaining it, but yeah, if you saw these cards, you know what I'm talking about. They're, they're, they're textured. And the back of this one looks pretty nice, nice and clean. Next, we have Nils Aster. Aster. Again, just look at the artwork. Absolutely amazing. And this card looks really nice. Just a little bit of uh, sort of dirt or grime on it. Back looks pretty clean. I have quite a bit to show tonight, so I'm going to try not to spend too much time on each card. This is Lou Ayers. Gorgeous artwork. Center, centering's pretty nice. Looks like a little bit of corner wear down here. A little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of dirt right there in the upper right. Otherwise, looks pretty nice. Next, we have Wallace Beery. This card looks fantastic on the front. Nice and bright white. Sorry about the focus. See if I can fix that. There we go. So we got a little bit of something on the back. Little, sorry, focus issues. I might have to move those those cards. I think they might be what's causing the, the cards to go out of focus. A little bit of dirt right here. I don't know what that dot is right there. A lot of dirt or something. But the back looks pretty nice otherwise. Nice centering. Let's go ahead and move these off camera, see if that fixes the focus. All right, next we have Elizabeth Bergner. dirt or print defect or something. Back doesn't look too bad. A little discoloration right here and here. Otherwise, not too bad. Again, I can't say enough about the artwork on this set. It's absolutely amazing. Next, we have John Bowles. A little 
black dot right there. A little bit of discoloration, a little grime right here. Centering is just slightly off. But the front looks nice. Next we have Mary Brow, I think. This card looks really nice on the front, nice and bright white. Says on the back, the late Mary Brow, so she must have passed away. Right about the time they did this set. A little bit of dirt right there, not too bad. A little bit of dirt down here. Centering's pretty nice. And the front looks great. Alright, next we have Jack Buchanan. Another card that looks fantastic on the front. A little bit of grime on the right side. A little bit on the right. Not too bad. Back doesn't look too bad. Centering's not, not the greatest. But it doesn't look like it has too much. A little bit of touch of dirt right there and there. Corners. And most of these cards look really nice. Next we have Maurice Chevalier. A little bit of dirt on the edges. Not too bad. Touch of corner wear. Maybe up here as well. And then the back. The back's got some damage. Looks like it might have been might have been pasted or something in an album, or it picked up something with the adhesive back. A little bit of a stain right there. A little bit of dirt on the top. This is probably the roughest back we've had so far. But the front looks nice. Alright, next we have May Clark. A little bit of edge dirt or grime. Much worse on the right side than the left, but there's a little bit on the left. The back doesn't look too bad. Maybe a touch of grime up here or dirt. Centering isn't too bad. A little off, but not too bad. Corners look nice. This one might have a little touch. Next, we have Claudette Colbert. This one looks pretty nice. A little, little bit of stuff on the right side, little grime, not too bad. Left side, minimal, but there is some. Back doesn't look too bad. A little, little right there. Maybe on the right, or the left. Not, off. not too bad. Still for 1934 cards, about to be in 2023. So, what, 89 year old cards? <laughs> Certainly can't complain. So, uh, we have uh, Jackie Cooper. A little bit of corner wear, both sides, little, little dirt, not too bad. Back looks pretty good. Minimal staining. Next we have Marion Davies. Little grime, not too bad. Left side, not too bad. Back looks pretty nice too. Minimal dirt right here. Corners look pretty nice. All right, next we have Dolores Del Rio. A pretty nice centering, maybe a little off from the top to bottom. Not too bad. A little 
spot of dirt right there. Left side looks really clean. Right side, a little bit of dirt, a little stain right there. A little off center, not too bad. All right, next we have Richard Dix. Looks pretty nice. A little, little dirt on the, the right side. Back is a little off center, but looks pretty clean. There's a little bit of dirt right there. Not too bad. Pretty clean. Next we have Irene Dunn. A little dirt on the left side. A little bit on the right, I guess. Corners look pretty good. Maybe a little bit on this bottom left. Back looks pretty clean. A little dirt right there. Next we have Anne Dvorak. This card looks pretty clean. A little bit of dirt right here and here. The left side looks pretty nice. And the back doesn't look too bad. Little stain right here, here. Oop. And right there. The centering's a little off. Not too bad at all. Next we have Douglas Fairbanks. Look like there's too much, too much staining or dirt on this one. A little bit right there. Centering's a little off, and the back looks pretty clean. A touch of staining right there and there. And that's about it. Very nice. Okay, next we have Norman Foster. Centering certainly off on this one, but I don't see a whole lot of dirt on this one. A little bit right here. Not too bad though. Nice and clean, bright white. Back we we have a little bit of little bit of dirt right there. A little print defect right there the off center on the back as well but not too bad next we have Janet Gaynor there's a little dirt on both sides actually centering isn't too bad corners look nice and we have a pretty good stain right there here as well. A little bit of dirt. Not too bad though. Absolutely love the artwork. <laughs> Can't say enough about the artwork. Alright, this might be the biggest name. Well, one of the biggest names, certainly. Gary Grant. This card looks pretty nice. Minimal dirt right here, here, here. Not too bad. It looks like a little staining or something right here. Looks like off here as well. But a nice card to get. All right, next we have Sunny Hale. A little bit of dirt right here. Left side looks pretty good. Pretty nice corners. Back looks pretty clean. Yeah, I can't complain about that other than the centering. That might be the nicest back we've had so far.
Next we have Anne Harding. This is a pretty nice little, little dirt right there. Not too bad. This is another really clean back. A little off center, but not too much dirt or damage on the back of this one. Pretty nice. And the next one, we have Robertson Hale. This car does a little dirt on the right side. Left side looks pretty good. A little corner wear. Top right. Back doesn't look too bad. Minimal dirt. Maybe a little touch of a stain right there. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right, so that's the first 25. And here's the final 25. All right, next we have Leslie Howard. This card looks pretty clean. Minimal dirt on the left side. Right side looks pretty clean. Centering isn't too bad. A little bit of corner wear, bottom two corners. Back doesn't look too bad. A little touch right here and here, down here as well. Actually, that's kind of a stain. Not too bad. Next, we have Jack Hulbert. Pretty nice. A little bit of dirt right here, a little bit on the left side, not too bad. And if the, uh, the cards weren't textured, I'd imagine that there would be a lot less dirt on these. A little bit of staining along the edge of this one, right here, here, here as well. I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but yeah, there's a little bit of staining on this one. Front looks nice though. And next we have Pert Kelton. Centering's a little off. A little bit of dirt on the right side. A little right here. Touch of corner wear. Corner wear. Corner wear. This might have the worst corners so far. And the centering isn't the greatest. A little bit of dirt. But not too bad. Especially for the age. All right, next we have Margaret Lindsay. Little corner wear right there. Little dirt right here. Left side's minimal, minimal dirt right there. Back looks pretty clean. Minimal dirt right here. Next, we have Ida Lupino. A little bit of dirt along the top. A little on the right side. Left side, minimal dirt. There is a little. And on the back, just a little bit of dirt along the right side. The corners look pretty good. Next, we have Joan Marsh. Little dirt along the right side. Not too much on the left. Certainly a stain along this edge. A couple along this edge. Otherwise, not too bad. Centering. A little bit of centering issue. Next, we have Douglas Montgomery. A little bit of dirt along the right side, along the top. Left looks pretty good. Minimal, minimal dirt. Center is pretty good. Little stain, stain, stain. But not too bad. And I honestly don't know how whoever has owned these sets 
has been able to keep stuff from sticking to the adhesive back of any of these. <laughs> so as long as there isn't anything stuck to the back, a little bit of dirt and stuff like that, I don't think you can help that, especially with the sticky surface. It's not very sticky anymore, but it was certainly sticky for many years. You got a little bit of a little bit of a stain right there. A little dirt on the right side. Oh, the, sorry, this is Ann Nagel. Back doesn't look too bad on this one. A little bit of a stain right there. Centering isn't the greatest. Not too bad. Next, we have Jack Oakey. This one has very little dirt. A little right there, a little touch right there. Not too bad. This corner's a little damaged. This one, is, this one up top right is a little bit as well. Back isn't too bad either. A little bit of a touch of something right there. A little dirt right here. Not too bad. All right, next we have Merle Oberon. I think that's a great, great picture. I don't know what role this is, but that looks awesome. A little bit of dirt along the right side, a little bit on the left. Corners look pretty good. Back doesn't look too bad. A little bit of touch of staining top. Yeah, left and right sides don't look too bad. A little bit of a touch down at the bottom sure what that is. Pretty nice card. All right, next we have Pat Patterson. A little bit of dirt left and right side. Corners don't look too bad. Back doesn't look too bad. A little staining along the top edge. I don't know if you can see that. Little specks of staining right here and here. Not too bad. Next we have Esther Ralston. A little bit of dirt right here. A little dirt on the right at the left side. Not too bad. Corners look pretty good. A little stain right here, here. Little dirt right here, not too bad. A little dirt here as well. Centering's pretty good. Next, there's another pretty big name, Ginger Rogers. This card looks pretty good. A little bit of dirt here, a little dirt here. Touch of corner wear. Back looks pretty nice. Little stain, little stain. Not too dirty. Maybe a little touch right here. Very happy with this one. Now here's one that was one of the main reasons I wanted to get the set. I did not have a car to this individual. That's Will Rogers. He's kind of a legend in Texas. A little bit of dirt right here along the edge of this. Certainly happy to get this one, though. A little corner wear, bottom right. Back has a little bit of something right there. A little staining here, here, here along the left side. Right side isn't too bad. Certainly happy to have a Will Rogers card in my collection. All right, next we have Randolph Scott. A little corner wear, or a little edge wear. Actually, that's dirt, not wear. And a little dirt right here. Not too bad. It's pretty nice. A little dirt, or a little stain right there. A little stain right there. Little corner wear on the bottom. Yeah, 
this one for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that, that corner's pretty damaged. But front looks pretty nice. All right, next we have Barbara Stanwyck. Little dirt, little dirt, not too bad. This back looks pretty clean. Not too many stains. A little touch of something right there. Otherwise, not too bad. Next, we have Anna Sten. A little dirt, a little dirt. Seems like the dirt's in the same place on every card for the most part. The tops and the bottoms don't seem to have too much dirt. Occasionally you see it, but not too many, not too many that have it there. Little, little something right there, a little dirt. Not too bad. It's a pretty clean back. All right, next, Gloria Stewart. A little, little off centering wise. Dirt, dirt, dirt right here. Little corner wear. Three of the four corners. Ooh, <laughs> that centering on the back is brutal. That's the worst centering on any card so far. Yeah, that's pretty rough. But it's relatively clean. Little dirt, little dirt. Not too many, not too many stains though. But yeah, that centering is brutal. Not near as bad on the front. Next, we have Margaret Sullivan. Little dirt along the edge, both left and right. Corners are pretty good. The back is relatively clean, a little bit over here. Maybe a little bit on the left side as well, but not too bad. All right, next we have Genevieve. Tobin, Tobin, not sure how you pronounce that. Little touch of dirt, little touch of dirt, Some, something right down there, on the bottom, bottom left. Not too bad, relatively clean. Back a little bit of touch right here, but otherwise pretty clean. Pretty clean back, one of the nicer backs we've seen so far. And the front isn't too bad either. All right, winding down. I think we only have five more to go for this set. This is Evelyn Venable. A little bit of dirt. Left side looks pretty good. Centering's a little off. The front and the back as well. Little stain. Another stain. A little dirt on the right side. Not too bad. Next, we have May West. This card looks pretty good. Minimal dirt here, minimal dirt here. Not too bad. Pretty clean. And on the back. The back has a little damage. It looks like there's a little, little spots of staining. A little dirt or grime right here. That's here and here. But the back or the front looks really nice. All right, next we have Alice White. Little dirt, dirt on the left side as well. Actually, there's a little bit of dirt on the bottom. That might be the first one we've seen it on the bottom. The back looks pretty clean. Little touch here, here, not too bad. Centering's off. You can see some corner wear on the back much better than the front. But the front looks really nice. Centering as well. A little off. A little off top to bottom. Not too many. It looks pretty pretty spot on. All right. Two more to go. Next we have Dorothy Wilson. 
Centering's a little off. A uh, little dirt both sides. Not too bad. Back looks pretty good. A little spot right here. Looks like there's a little bit of edge dirt on the left side. Something right there. Right, right has it as well, but not too bad. And the final card is Robert Young. This one certainly has corner wear. All four corners. Minimal dirt on the sides. A little bit on the left side. The right doesn't have too much of it. I'm wondering if this card came from a different set. Just based on the, uh, the corner wear. Oh yeah, and the back is nice and grimy. Look at that. That's pretty rough. But yeah, that's a card number 50. If you have this like this and all the rest stacked up, yeah, this one's going to take the brunt of the damage sitting on the bottom. So certainly not surprised the last card in the set has some damage like this. But yeah, that's certainly the roughest back that we've seen, hands down. But the front looks pretty good. All right, so that's the 1934 Players Film Stars second series set. All right. Next, I'm actually going to show you a card that I didn't mention at the beginning. I was in a live stream a couple days ago, and uh, Uncanny Swag was talking about Terrell Davis, and I mentioned that I had a Beckett graded Terrell Davis rookie card and told him that I would show it in my next video. So I haven't shown this on my channel yet, so it's a perfect time to do so. Here we go. This is a Beckett 8.5 1995 Collector's Edge Instant Replay Prisms Terrell Davis Rookie Card. Look at the shine on this card. I was a big Terrell Davis fan. I actually bought this after the Broncos won their second of their back-to-back -back championships in the late 90s. Picked this up off of eBay. And then in 2001, I sent this along with uh, nine other cards. And it's the only submission that I've ever made, ever made to a grading company. I did it when I wasn't actually collecting. Um, so if you look on the back, this is one of the old labels with the... Uh, different grades that it got 10 on centering 8.5 on corners and edges nine on surface but this card looks looks mint to the eye I was actually expecting a much better grade than this but what, what can you do and and from what I understand Beckett especially uh, at this time was a relatively strict grader so if I were brave enough to crack these cards out of these Beckett slabs they might very well get a better grade but I'm certainly comfortable with an 8.5. Um, very happy to have this card in my collection. All right. So next we're going to show a, a little 12-card Com C order. All right, so I bought a pair of cards from 1990. I actually pulled these cards out of packs on a vacation. I think I was on a vacation in Florida with my family, and they had a little gift shop, and they had a box of this, uh, a box of cards of this set, and I purchased, I don't know, like 10 packs or something like that, and I actually pulled both of these cards, and both the players ended up becoming very big stars both ended up Hall of Famers and uh, I, I ended up trading away these cards along my journey and decided it was, this was a good time to pick them up so this is 1990 Pro Cards Minor League Jeff Bagwell and as you can see he's on the Red Sox he was eventually traded to Houston where he became a Hall of Famer I no longer had this card and really wanted to pick it back up. And 
from the same set. Frank Thomas. And this set, the centering's a little off, but uh, the price was right. So I picked it up. I was a big, big Frank Thomas fan. Played at Auburn for Bo Jackson. Yeah. So very happy to get these minor league cards of Jeff Bagwell and Frank Thomas back in my collection. Let's see what else. What else? What else? Okay. So I'll show these two next. These two are. Okay. So this is 2009 Bowman World Baseball Classic. And uh, I guess Bowman draft picks and prospects. And this is you Darvish. Being a Ranger fan, I really enjoyed watching you Darvish. And so this is certainly one of his early cards. He was still playing in Japan. And so I wanted to pick this up. And I picked up another card. This is the gold version from, I believe, the same set. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Certainly the same year. Might not be the same set. But I think it is. But very happy to add those two Darvish cards to my collection. All right, next. We have the 1992 Tom Selleck card for Mr. Baseball. Mr. Baseball was really the introduction for me for uh, Japanese baseball. And I actually have this card in my collection, but it's a little beat up. It was <clears throat> part of my childhood collection. So the, uh, <clears throat> the the corners are a little rough and I wanted to get a better copy of this. And if you'll notice on the left side, that's Frank Thomas. No, he did not play for the Yankees, but he did in the movie. And I always thought that was cool seeing Frank Thomas as a Yankee. Um, yeah, but there's the back. Tom Selleck right there. And so if you haven't seen Mr. Baseball, it's certainly worth worth watching. And from what I understand, um, what they showed about Japanese baseball uh, is, is pretty spot on from what I understand. So um, it's definitely worth checking out and really happy to get a better copy of this into my collection. All right, the next two are also Japanese cards and I had to make some notes of these uh, let me go ahead and flip my little sheet over All right, so the first one this is a 1948 multicolor baseball shape background round manko Noboru Aota. And so, like I said, this is a Manko. And Manko is sort of a game that you would play where you would take one of these cards and kind of put it in your hand. And then you would sort of, I guess, smash it on the table like this. And then if, if the, the cards that were on the table flipped over, I guess... They became yours. So it's sort of like, you know, I guess we had pogs in the mid-90s. I, I wasn't really into those, but it, it's, I would say that pogs were, were definitely sort of a spinoff of what mankos were in Japan. And so they had different shapes of mankos. They had, you know, the, the sort of the tobacco card shape. They had these. Uh, I think they had larger Larger discs, smaller discs, larger uh, rectangular, rectangular cards. But uh, I just love the condition of this one. And Alta is a Hall of Famer. And uh, the back is just kind of a cardboard back. Not a whole lot to it. But I thought the condition of this one was absolutely fantastic. And so I'll go ahead and put this right here. And 
read a little bit about Noboru Alta, give you an idea <clears throat> of the player he was. So his career batting average was 278. He had 265 home runs, 1,034 RBIs, 1,827 hits, 155 stolen bases. He was a five-time home run champ, a five-time best nine award winner in 48, 50, 51, 55, and 56. He was a six-time All-Star, 51, 52, 53, 55, 56, and 57. He was a one-time batting champ. He hit for the cycle one time. In 1959, when he retired at the age of 34, he was Japanese professional baseball's career leader in home runs with 265. He was surpassed in 1963 by Kazuhiro Yamauchi, who I actually had a card of and and showed you on one of the uncut sheets, if not both of the uncut sheets that I showed in the last couple weeks. And uh, Yamauchi was the first player to hit 300 home runs in Japan. And uh, yeah, so I did not have any cards of this age being 1948 and like I said the condition of this and then being a Hall of Famer it was a no-brainer pickup for me so very happy to add this to my collection and <clears throat> this next one is a more modern Japanese card this is from the 1980s but I had really been looking for a card of this individual because I, I think this guy was incredible and although I wouldn't put him with Sadaharu O or uh, Shigeo Nagashima or Nomura I would certainly put him in the top 10 um, maybe even higher than that so maybe top 5 but this is Hiramitsu Ochii and this is from 1987 this is 1987 Playball Japan Put this right here while I read what an incredible player he was. So he is in the Hall of Fame. He was a two-time Pacific League MVP in 82 and 85. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me read his uh, career stats. He had a 311 batting average, 510 home runs, 1,564 RBIs, 2,371 hits. Yeah, so like I was saying, he was a two-time Pacific League MVP in 1982 and 85. He was a three-time Triple Crown winner. Three times. I mean, we went from Carl Yastrzemski to Miguel Cabrera without a Triple Crown winner. And Ochi won three Triple Crowns, 1982, 85, and 86. I mean, I just find that incredible that he was able to accomplish that. He also did not become an everyday player until 1981 at the age of 28. And he ended up with the stats that he did. 510 home runs, 1,564 RBIs. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. He was a 15-time All-Star, a five-time home run champ. He led the league in walks 10 times. He was a 10-time Best Nine Award winner. And this, this is another incredible stat. His 500th, 1,000th, 1,500th, and 2,000 hits were all home runs. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a fluky stat, but that's incredible. I mean, talk about rising to the occasion. <laughs> and he was obviously the first to accomplish this feat. He was known as the exception to Japanese baseball's culture way of conformity and structure. He wouldn't take batting practice or infield practice if he didn't want to. Sounds a little bit like Allen Iverson, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, he refused to change his bucket foot swing despite many coaches' efforts to do so. He was also the first player to earn 100, 200, 300, and 400 million yen in a season. And as a manager... He won the Matsutaro Shuriki Award one time and led his team, the Chinichi Dragons, who is also, ironically, the team that uh, Tom Selleck plays for in Mr. Baseball. Uh, he led the Chinichi Dragons to four Central League titles in eight seasons before stepping down 
with a win-loss record of 629 wins, 491 losses. So this is an absolutely incredible ball player and very happy to finally have a card of his in my collection. All right, next we have a little bit of hockey. So we have this tops. So we have 84, 85 tops, Pat LaFontaine rookie card. Wanted to pick up a LaFontaine rookie. I'm not sure if he TTMs or not, but uh, definitely wanted to add his rookie to my collection. Pretty big fan of his. Next, I actually already bought one of these and didn't realize I had, so I ended up buying another one, but that's okay. I don't mind having two of his rookie cards. Joe Neuendijk. This is his rookie card. Tops as well. This is 88-89. And I bought a who is it? Opeachy. So this is 89-90 Opeachy. Brian Leach rookie card. Certainly wanted to get his rookie card in my collection. Fantastic player. All of these guys are. And I have the regular version of this one. And being a Dallas Stars fan, I wanted to get the bilingual version. This is the Mike Madano score rookie card. And this is the bilingual. As you can see on the back, if I can get it to focus, there you go. So happy to add that one to my collection as well. And so that's the hockey, but the next one's sort of a play on hockey. And this is the last card of my Com C order. And this is a 1996-97 Upper Deck Steve Nash rookie card. And I've never owned this card, and, you know, obviously with Steve Nash being a critical part of the sort of rise of the Dallas Mavericks of the early 2000s after the uh, the dregs of the 90s being the worst team in basketball. Uh, I'm a big fan of Steve Nash, and I just love the fact that this card came out with him with the hockey stick and the skates on, sitting on the ice in his Phoenix Suns jersey. So really cool. And the back picture is pretty cool too. So certainly very happy to get this card into my collection. All right. Go ahead and move those out of the way. Sort of clean up my desk. This next one's a pretty big top loader. So I am going to end the video by showing my last couple uncut sheets that I purchased a couple couple weeks back, probably five, six weeks now. Let me go ahead and uh, sort of raise my camera a little bit. Let me see what the uh, the mat looks like. Hold on. No, I guess the mat looks pretty straight. All right, so here they are, and I gotta say these are absolutely amazing. These might be my favorites, and I love the other two. Uh, you know, they were both absolutely incredible, but these, it's just the, the artwork and the imagery on these cards are absolutely amazing. And the, there's some serious star power on these sheets as well. This is actually two of them. Let me bring this up so you can kind of see. Got them both in the same, same top loader. I'll go over each card, and uh, for the ones that I haven't had a card of yet, I'll sort of give you a background of, of the individual. Um, there are some players on these cards that, for whatever reason, are unknown, and uh, all the research that I did, I wasn't able to figure out who they are. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody has documented who they are, but uh, hopefully, hopefully that's okay. But, uh, and, and, and to be honest with you, some of these, I'm not even sure which one, which player is which, because these are multiplayer cards, but in, in some of them, I, I can certainly tell you who is who. So this one right here, I'm not sure which one is which, and I can't really tell 
I, I, I think this is Chinichi Dragons, but I'm not sure. So if that's the case, this is an unknown Dragons player. And then this would be Akatoshi Kodama. Hopefully I said that right. And Akatoshi Kodama had a batting average of 286 with 130 home runs, 788 RBIs, 1,963 hits. He was a nine-time All-Star and a five-time Best Nine Award winner. So he was certainly a good player. He's not a Hall of Famer, but he was certainly a good player. This next one, this is Chico Barbone. He's on the sheet that... um, he might be on both sheets that I showed over the past couple weeks. But the other one is Kayoshi Watanabe right here. And Kayoshi Watanabe um, doesn't look like he had a very long career. He had a batting average of 248 with 19 home runs, 200 RBIs, 476 hits. But, uh, let, me, let me bring this up to the camera so you can just look at these, those cards and the imagery. And I actually haven't shown you the back. Let me flip this over and show you the back. The back of these are like playing card backs. Oh, actually, let me let me show you the back, and then I'll actually tell you what this uh, set is. Actually, let me bring this up to the camera. That might might help. These are certainly interesting backs. And these numbers, I'm not sure what they're for. Uh, there's a lot of mankos and different uh, Japanese cards that have the numbers on the back. I assume they're for a game or something. But I'm honestly not 100% certain. So anyway, um, I forgot to mention that this is a JCM 129. This is the 1958 uh, Mitsuwa Mitsua War playing back cards. That's what this set is. And I think there were several more um, cards in this set. I don't know if this was cut like this on purpose or if it came in a larger sheet as you can see it looks like it's sort of un, you know kind of cut cut weird so sort of maybe right along the, the border uh, the white border um, so I'm not sure if this was cut by an individual or if this is how the manufacturer distributed these or what but um, certainly happy to have them regardless this next one right here is uh, certainly one of my my favorite Japanese ball players of all time. This is Masaichi Canada, and I think his rookie card was in '57. So this is a second year Canada, and uh, very happy to get this and add it to my collection. Uh, if you don't remember, he is a Hall of Famer, and he was a 400 game winner as a pitcher, and that's the most in in Japanese baseball history. And so certainly very happy to get this card and add it to my collection. This next one, there's, there is uh, an unknown Wales player, which I believe is this one. And the other one is Kazahisa Inau. And he's a Hall of Famer, and he might very well be the second best pitcher next to Kaneda. And I believe he was the best right-handed pitcher, uh, certainly of this time. Uh, in Japanese baseball history. And um, this is early in his career, if not his rookie year. But he, I think he's, he's, his rookie is either 57 or 58. So very happy to get this one and add it to my collection. Now, this one is probably the second greatest Japanese baseball player of all time. I've talked about him before. This is Shigeo Nagashima. And this is his rookie year. This is his rookie card, one of his rookie cards. And the other person right here in the background is also a Hall of Famer, so two Hall of Famers on one card. This is Yoshio Yoshida. And I also have him on either one or both of the other sheets that I showed. So this is an awesome card to get. Let me, let me show you the last couple cards that I've shown a little more up close. 
So there's a little, sorry about the focus. I'm trying to get it. There we go. Shigeo Nagashima rookie card. Very cool. All right. So this next one right here is one that I do not believe was on either of the sheets that I've shown so far. And this is a Hall of Famer. This is Ryohi Hasegawa. And Ryohi Hasegawa had a win-loss record of 197 and 208. So he had a losing career record, but he is a Hall of Famer. He had a 2.65 ERA, 1,564 strikeouts. And he threw a shuto, which they actually talk about in Mr. Baseball. And a shuto is a cross between a fastball, a slider, and a sinker. And he was one of the, the, the most well-known shuto pitchers as far as that I, I've been able to discover. There might have been better shuto pitchers uh, before or after or during, but uh, not that I've discovered yet. So I thought it was really cool that he, he threw a shuto. Um, he also threw a slider and a sinker as well. And he used a submarine delivery and a sidearm delivery. And he was also a seven-time All-Star. So he was certainly a pretty good, pretty good player. Um, moving on to the last two cards on this first sheet. And just like the one right here, it's the same two players. This is Shigeo Nagashima. And this is Yoshio Yoshida. So this is Yoshio Yoshida batting. This is Yoshio Yoshida portrait. So let me bring that up to the camera. Again, I can't say enough about <laughs> these cards and how artistic they are. And I absolutely love these. Absolutely love them. I think they're absolutely amazing. I mean, forget the players on them. I, I, I love the artwork as much as the players that are on the card. And so, yeah, this is another Shigeo Nagashima rookie card. And, uh, you know, having a second Hall of Famer on the same card as well, I mean, how can you beat that? So very happy to get that one. This one right here is this one. This actually helps me. This is an unknown batter. So I'm not even sure. You can't even really tell what team they're from. But this one right here is Atsushi Horiuchi. And Atsushi Soriuchi went by Sho. So Sho Horiuchi. And he had a win-loss record of 62 wins, 44 losses. He had a career ERA of 2.17 with 756 strikeouts. So he was uh, a fairly good player. Uh, doesn't look like he played very long. But... uh Certainly a pretty good player, at least his stats would, would say so. All right, moving on to the second sheet. And this is the JCM 162 1960 playing card backs set. And this is um, one of the rarer sets uh, known. Apparently... Um, I don't remember what his first name is, but Engel wrote a book. Uh, I, th I believe it's a price guide that I certainly want to pick up in the future. And he rated this set right here. And this, I don't, I don't believe that this is the complete set as an R3. And an R3 meant fewer than 100 copies are known to exist. So if that's the case, I'm <laughs> incredibly happy to have this. And uh, there are some, some names on this one as well, at least on the left side. So we will start with this one right here. And this is Masaichi Canada, just like over here. Let me bring that up to the camera. This is from 1960. And I've mentioned this name before. This is Yoshio Yoshida. And obviously, these are both Hall of Famers. Uh, Yoshio Yoshida. This is uh, Kazuhiro Yamauchi, who is a Hall of Famer. 
And this last one right here is Shigeo Nagashima. So very happy to get what I believe is a third year Shigeo Nagashima. Now, the right side of this sheet, from what I understand, these are TV shows, and I can't really tell you what TV shows, but I think the artwork is just fantastic. I'm not even going to attempt to guess what TV shows these are from. I'll just let you take a look at the cards. And actually, so there we go. I'll go ahead and show you the front and the back one more time. Front. Let me go ahead and bring it up to the camera. And these are actually really thick stock. back a close look at the back one more time sorry about the glare I guess I'll have to help that and the backs are as interesting as the fronts out for you. See, I mean, that's me holding it. It's it's really thick cardboard. Much thicker than your regular cards. As you can see. Certainly happy to have these in my collection now. All right, so to wrap up the video, last week, in the video I posted last week, I, I mentioned that when the video actually premiered, for most people, it was December 11th, 2022. And December 11th, 2021, I made my first baseball card or card purchase. It wasn't a baseball card. First card purchase since I stopped collecting in 2000. So 21, 22 years. And, um, you know, I guess that's my anniversary of getting back into the hobby. And I'm certainly glad to be back in the hobby. And I've made many, many purchases since then. And since the next two weekends are Christmas Eve for those that celebrate Christmas and New Year's Eve, I thought that would be a good time to do sort of an anniversary sort of special. And I'm going to do it over both weekends um, and kind of celebrate my one year being back into the hobby by showing my favorite card pickups over the last year. And I haven't made a single purchase since December 11th that has arrived yet anyway. And so everything that I'm showing I purchased within that one year time frame of when I bought that. 1970 Kellogg's Exograph Bubba Smith rookie card to my latest purchase, which would probably be these Com C cards that I showed. Um, you know, so I'm going to be able to show you everything that that I, I consider my favorites of the last year, 
And so that's what I'm going to be showing. I don't know how I'm going to split it up. I'll figure that out. Uh, but I'll be showing that on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So you have that to look forward to over the next couple weeks. And uh, starting next next year, uh, after the New Year's, uh, I'll start showing some of the newer stuff that I have uh, picked up over the past month. So uh, hopefully that stuff has come in by then. Anyway, I appreciate everybody for uh, coming and watching tonight. I know it's a little longer video than I normally post, a little over an hour. Uh, but hopefully you stayed till the end and enjoyed yourself. Uh, Spine Ticks, uh, thank you so much for, for all your support. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, I will talk to everybody again soon. Uh, Merry Christmas if I don't see you before next weekend or ne don't hear, hear from you before next weekend. Talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye.